there. Every time. <laughs> I've said the same line like a hundred of times, which by the way, I think I need a new line, but you think I'd remember the old line. <laughs> so let's try this again. Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got lots of DIY crafts coming your way. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. And see. Today we'll be working on some last minute easy DIY farmhouse rustic patriotic home decor crafts. That's a mouthful, but let's get started with project number one. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these signs from Dollar Tree. You can use any signs, of course, but I'm using this because I like the width of it. I'm going to use the one of these thick round circles. And then throughout all my crafts today, I will be using these cute wood stars. They come from craftingwithkimber.com. They come in different sizes. I'll make sure I have the link down below for you because these can work for Christmas crafts too. So really cute design. I'm going to use one small star for that. I'm going to cut this down just using my miter box and saw to about eight and a half inches and then when I sand it to smooth it out I'm going to just kind of sand in a little bit on both sides to kind of make it narrow toward the bottom wider toward the top I'm going to use Waverly Antique Wax today these Dixie Bell paints and Yankee Blue Barn Red and Debbie's Design Diary DIY White Swan Chalk Paint all my crafts today. I have filled the circle in this wood with just some wood filler. And the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of stain all my projects underneath uh, just so when I go to paint on top and then I sand it, you'll just see a little bit of that dark stain kind of peeking out around the paint, especially, you know, on this light wood. It just kind of gives it a little bit more character, I personally think, but, you know, do it how you would love to do it. So here's my piece. It's all sanded, ready to go, a little wider at the top, a little narrower at the bottom. I could have done it even more so, so it's really noticeable, but I think it's good enough. It does the job. So of course, I'll get that uh, painted up with our little Waverly Wax mixed with water. I love to do this when I remember to do this. When I don't remember to do this, I'm like, oh, I should have done this. So I'm doing it now. <laughs> Once that wax is dry, I'm going to use some painter's tape here and about one and a half inches up from the bottom. I'm going to tape it off all the way around. I'm going to paint this all the way around. I'm going to start in with the Yankee blue uh, chalk paint here and I will paint the bottom portion of this as well as the our thick round circle. Now my original inspiration from from this was I saw somebody, you know, share a haul of some home decor they bought and it was a cute you know, patriotic 4th of July metal hat. And I'm like, well, let's make the same thing out of wood. So this is my design, you know, concept of what I saw made out of wood. I think it turns out pretty cute. I think we did the job here. While that's drying, we'll move on to the star. Although later on, I decide I need a bigger star. So you're just going to kind of see this bigger star, you know, grow three sizes. But anyway, painting it with the white swan chalk paint. Now, once our blue paint is dry, I'm going to take off that tape and then I'm going to re-tape it right underneath that line of blue we just painted. And then off camera, because it took me a little bit of time to get the spacing, I use about a half inch wide washi tape and I just kind of tape three stripes up and over and around the tall length of our hat here. You can do as many stripes as you want. Once you get that into position, of course, I'm coming in with that red barn chalk paint. And we're going to uh, paint it all up around the sides, top everything, of course. And then while the washi tape is still on, I'm going to come in and use some 220 grit sandpaper, and I'm going to distress it so that that red paint doesn't go into the untaped areas when we remove the tape and then kind of cause a mess if we try to paint the white over it and that kind of thing. I just find it easier to distress it while the tape is on and that way once we remove the tape there's a nice fresh clean area to do our next painting job. So once that's done I'm going to re-tape over the red areas to keep that all nice and protected and then I'll go in on those unpainted areas and bring in our white swan chalk paint and paint those areas. And I just do one coat of all the paints because we're going to distress it anyway. And since we already kind of seen me distress, you know, with our sandpaper and stuff, once this white paint is all dry off camera, I will go in and distress that up. I will distress our big round, you know, blue piece. Here's what it looks like all painted. 
And I'm going to show you what that looks like here in just a moment. Here, everything is all nice and distressed up. Looks nice. I love it. And you don't have to distress if you're not a lover of that. You can keep it all nice and pretty. All right. And here is where I changed stars. I just like that bigger star better. I think it makes more of an impact statement. Now I have a little tag here. This is just some tea dye paper from my stash. I cut it into a little shape tag. We're going to use some button, 18 gauge wire, and some clickable stamps from Michaels that spell USA. All right. I'm going to distress up my big star here because we want it to look like the rest of our uh, hat here. I love how this star just distresses up. I don't know. I just love that look. It's just pure beautiful to me. Now I'm coming in with my sewing machine and I want to just do a little sewing on our tag. I just like to add that effect. If you're new to my channel, I love sewing on papers and stuff like that. Regular, uh, you know, sewing thread needle and just sew on it like you're sewing on fabric. Cut off my little excess thread, and I'm going to take the open end of my scissor blades and scrape along the edge here just to give it a little bit more of a rustic feel. I'm going to use my Distress Oxide Ink and Vintage Photo and my little, you know, ink dauber here and just kind of distress the front and back up. I like to use VersaFine ink because it just makes a nice crisp image. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the USA on my tag. And then I'm going to take that 18 gauge wire. I think it's about 24 inches. I just cut off a big long piece and I'm going to wrap it around a handle of a large sized paintbrush here. And then I'm going to take a little drill bit that matches the size of my wire and drill a hole into my hat. Not all the way through, just enough to get a nice length of wire into the hat. And then I'll drill all the way through the star. And then I'm just kind of start smushing my curly wire, see how much I might need to cut off the end to fit into the drilled hole in the hat. And then I'll add my star to the wire. I'll go ahead and make a hole in my tag. I'll thread that onto the wire. I'm gonna smush my tag up just a little bit here at first. We'll smush some more up later. Add the button on there and just see how long I want that straight end to be. Because what I'm gonna do is take it out what's left of that straight end and curl it around a smaller sized paintbrush and then I'm going to smoosh that curly down onto the button just to give it a little bit of that curly up above our star cut off any excess go ahead and use my beacon Fabri-Tac glue here and I'm just kind of glue down that button I'm going to smoosh my tag up a little bit more I'll glue the tag down that way everything stays in place and I'm going to use some super glue here because it's nice and liquidy add it onto the other end of our wire and push that into the drilled hole in our hat and i'll smush my star down how i want it to be i love how it looks from this side here i wish you could see that from the front but you know then we'll take beacon quick grip glue we're going to use that to glue the top portion of our hat onto the brim that makes this project complete but we'll look at the finished looks after project number two with that said, let's move right on into project number two. For this project, I'm going to use this sign from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to just take all of this paper and stuff off. I'm going to use a couple of the smaller stars from craftingwithkimber.com. Here it is off camera. I took all the papers off, and then I just went ahead and used my electric sander, and I just sanded off couple of corners to make it look like a long tag. And now I'm just going to draw a spot here so I know where to drill a hole. And then we'll be ready to go. Bringing in Debbie's Design Diary Little Black Dress. And then I'm going to use Waverly uh, Chalk Paint in white for this. And I'm just going to paint this whole thing black. I know you're thinking that's really not patriotic colors. But wait for it. It'll look cool when it's done. Just one coat painting all the way around. Because again, you know I'm all about distressing. And I will distress it all up. All right. So I'm going to bring in our... Waverly Antique Wax for this. I'm going to stain my little stars at first. And I chose Waverly White Chalk Paint because I'm going to use some white vinyl for this. And I want, I have a thing with, if I use white vinyl, I want white chalk paint. You know, if I'm going to use white on my project, I can't stand to use white vinyl and then like an off-white chalk paint or something like that the white shades got to match <laughs> it's just me once the paint is dry I'm going to come in and just distress both my stars because you know I like the way that looks because I mentioned it in project number one and here's the beauty of it 
And then I've got three beads here, just Dollar Tree beads. And I'm going to, of course, paint one white, one red, one blue. I've just got them on a little skewer and a little bit of tape in between so that the, you know, beads don't fall into the next bead with the wet paint. I'm just trying to keep them a little bit separate. Right, let those dry, and then I'll just distress them a little bit off camera once they're dry. Just a little bit of sandpaper around the center. I'll show you that. Here they are all kind of distressed up. And then here is my vinyl. It's just really easy, easy uh, design here. I will have a link to my blog for a free printable for a PDF if you want to use carbon paper and, you know, like a Sharpie marker and copy it on. Or if you have an electronic cutting machine, you want to do the PNG and clean out around the letters and stuff, but that might take you a little bit of time. So I'll just have the fonts listed if you want to go in and just, you know, type it up yourself. It'd probably be a lot quicker. Once my vinyl's on, I'll glue my stars on either side of our little quote here using my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. I love this project. It's nice and easy. Came out simple. It's, you know, really cute. Just, you know, how I like to measure. I got to have it, you know, equal distance from each edge. And now I'm gonna make a little tassel. I'm taking some red and kind of cream twine or red brown twine from Dollar Tree, wrapping it around my four fingers 20 times, and then I will cut off the excess. Perfect, and then I'm gonna just cut off, just eyeballing it, a short piece and a great big long piece of twine. I'm gonna take the long piece and I'm gonna go through all those wraps at the top of my fingers, and then I'll pull that wrap off and then I'm gonna take both twines together at the top of those wrapped twine, I don't know what you call it, and I'm gonna just tie one big knot, keep it all together at the top, just like that. And then I'm gonna take the shorter piece and about one inch down from that knot we just made, and I'm gonna wrap it around all those wraps of twine. And just tie a little knot, nice and easy and bring those down into position. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut through all those loops. And then I'm gonna trim everything off at the bottom, make give it a nice haircut, right? This is what it looks like. We have a cute little tassel here. I love that twine from Dollar Tree. They bring it in right about summertime with all the uh, nautical stuff. So I get a ton of it. Now I'm wrapping some tape around the end of that long, long twine so that I can add all of my red, white, and blue beads in order onto top of that tassel. And then I'm going to thread it through the hole in our, you know, jihugic tag. Now this tag I saw at Hobby Lobby already done. I'm like, I can make that. So here it is. Once I get that threaded through, I'm going to just make a little knot at the end of the wood tag. And then I'm going to take the end of that rope or that twine, and I'm going to bring it all the way through the beads and then I'm going to cut off the excess at the bottom of the bead so that it's hidden. It's nice and finished off. And then that makes this project complete. Let's move into project number three. For this project, it's just a piece of scrap wood I had left over from a spindle. It's about a two by two size. I almost went with the four by four size because you could do a four by four if you wanted like a larger centerpiece. And I've got four of the smaller stars from craftingwithkimber.com and I'm just placing the star on there so I know how uh, far below it I want to tape off that top portion. We're gonna do just like we did in the first project. 
So this should be nice and easy. Before we start painting on that, I'm bringing in the Waverly Antique Wax mixed with water. We're going to stain our stars. And then while that's drying, we'll go back with our Yankee Blue chalk paint and paint the top portion of our block here. Yes, this would look so cute, like a bigger 4x4 four four block, like for a centerpiece, you know, in the middle of, you know, like barbecue table, picnic table would look really cute and it'd be so quick and easy to do. Once that paint is dry, we're going to take that tape off. We're going to re-tape around where we just painted. And then I'm using some washi tape here again, making sure I'm completely <laughs> equal on both sides and just go from one side over the top to the other side to make some stripes. And then on the other two sides of the block, I'm only just gonna bring the tape up to the top. I don't want like a checkered pattern on the bottom. Here's what I mean. So I don't bring the tape up and around over that other side. And then I'm gonna bring in our barn red chalk paint and get our paint in there to start on our red stripes. Yeah, I love how this turned out so quick and easy. And of course, you could even make a set of three of them. But, you know, I'm just trying to make last minute, nice, quick, easy projects. But a set of three would be quick and easy. Yep, agree with that. We're going to let that dry. And then I'll bring in the white swan chalk paint here in just a moment. But first, I've got a wood tag out of my supply. Now, you could use these. They come in a set of dominoes at Dollar Tree. It's just pretty much almost the same size, about a half inch short. You could use the back side of that for a wood tag. Going to stain it with the Waverly Antique Wax mixed with water. And then once that's dry, I'm going to come in with that white swan chalk paint. And I'm going to paint up the wooden tag. I'll paint both sides in case... A little bit is seen which it can be from the back side and then I'll come in and just paint one side of the stars because obviously we're going to glue it down so we don't need to worry about the back side and then let those dry for a minute while those are drying I'm going to come in just like we did on the first project and leave the washi tape on and go ahead and sand our red paint down to stress it all up make it look nice and worn and weathered just the way I like it then once that's done, we're going to peel off our washi tape, see our nice crisp edges, loving it so far. Washi tape works nice, and I love washi tape for this. Sometimes you do get a little bleeding, yes, but it works nice because you just have all those different widths of washi tape, you know, so you're not just the one inch from like painter's tape. You have nice different widths that you can work with. I do use painter's tape to kind of tape off that red painted area um, just because it's easier. Don't have to use as much washi tape up because you know you don't get as much on a roll like painter's tape. And then tape off the red like I said and bring in our white swan chalk paint and paint that up. Once that's dry I'm going to come in and distress that up while the painter's tape is still on there. Just doing one side at a time here. And then I'll peel the tape off, tape up the other side, and then do the same thing. It's a few steps, but, you know, it's worth it in the end when it's all done and complete. I'll distress the rest of that off camera because we all know how it goes. We've seen it done a few times today, and here's what it looks like when it's all done. But I will come in and go ahead and distress my stars up and my little wood tag making it look all ready for us. And then off camera, I've sewn another piece of that uh, tea dyed paper and cut it to fit my tag and then distressed around the edges with the open end of my scissor blades and then coming back in with that distress oxide ink and distressing it up a little more. And with my clickable stamps for this one, I spell out Old Glory. I'm just gonna do a practice stamp to the right there, make sure it's gonna look good on my tag, get that stamped on there. Perfect. And then I'm going to glue that onto the wood tag. I kind of curled up the edges a little bit just to give it a little bit of a worn look. And then I'll go ahead and add some of that Distress Oxide ink onto the tag itself. It's a little bit too clean looking. And then I'm going to drill a little hole here at the top blue edge of our firecracker. We've all seen a lot of firecrackers, but heck, it's fun, right? Um, taping a little bit of tape on this large twine I get pick up at Dollar Tree large diameter twine but leaving the tape on there cutting off a little excess but leaving the tape on there so that it will hold in nicely in the hole with the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue I'm going to cut off the excess of that twine and then smush out the ends and then I'm going to add a little bit of glue and add some thinner Dollar Tree twine right at the junction of that blue and red and white stripes I'm going to make a few wraps around here 
Just want to give it a little something, something. I'm going to kind of tie a half knot and then I'm going to thread our tag onto that half knot area. And before I tie it, I want to pull it down and make sure I have enough room for my star here. And then I'll go ahead and finish tying up that half knot into a full knot, make a little bow. Perfect. Cut off the tails. I like to leave my tails a little bit long. And then I'll go ahead and glue down all the other stars, making sure they are all, you know, measured even from top to bottom all the way around. And off camera, I do take like a little piece of cardboard and I glue it to the underneath of that tag. And then I glue that tag to the firecracker so that it sits all up nice and level on our firecracker. That makes this project complete and we'll take a look at it at the end of our next project. And with that, let's move into project number four. For this project, I have a piece of scrap wood here. It's like four and a quarter inches tall, five and a quarter inches long, and one large star from craftingwithkimber.com, and a piece of a popsicle stick. I just cut down, don't know the size, but I cut it down to fit the <laughs> quote I wanted on there. I'm just going to start by painting the whole thing white, and then I realize, wait, I didn't stain it first. So the back is white, and then I come in and paint the front and the sides. I stain it with the Waverly Antique Wax uh, mixed with water, and then once that dry I come in and you know paint it white but you know the back's finished off let's call it that <laughs> I'm going to stain the star as well front and back because you'll see a little bit of the star hanging off our flag here and then I'll paint our little popsicle stick or craft stick or whatever you want to call it stain that as well and then I'm going to come in you can see my blocks all nice done I'm going to paint my star in white and then I'm going to paint my little craft stick in the barn red now off camera I went ahead and distressed our larger block and then of course I'll go ahead and distress the star here and then off camera I distressed the little you know red craft stick as well but you know I have to show you I did do the distressing I don't know why <laughs> now here's the hard part for me y'all I'm doing this by hand because you know how I like to measure everything I'm going by hand and I'm just painting some red stripes they're a little wonky looking, some are a little wider, some are a little not wide enough, but you know, we can go in with our sanding and kind of fix that up. So now I'm coming in with some 220 grit sandpaper and I try to keep the sanding. I was surprised because the red didn't really leak into the white like it usually does. It just kind of came off. I don't know what happened, but here I'm trying to make the stripe a little bit better. And I thought that red was going to leak all into the white and it didn't. But anyway, so now I'm distressing everything up. And I'm like, okay, I, I got this. I can do this just freehand. I don't have to measure everything out. <laughs> so once that's done, now I'm going to come in freehand and do the blue. And then now that's freaking me out, but I'm like, I got this. I got this. So a little bit of freehand on the blue and I come in and just make a little bit of fun into the red stripes a little bit. And then here I am, I thought I distressed this off camera. Here I am distressing the little red craft stick. I lied, didn't mean to. And then I'm going to come in and distress the blue star area. I actually love the way this turned out all freehand. I need to do it more often. Not. Now this is just left over because this, you notice, is from project number two. I accidentally, when I cut it out, I cut it out in black vinyl because it was just my go-to instead of white vinyl and I had it left over. So I'm like, why not use it? So this, I'm just using this part, putting it onto the craft stick. You could totally just take a Sharpie marker and write it on there nice and easy. No free printable for this. Or you could use the other free printable and use that part of it and, you know, copy it again anyway put that onto the little red craft stick now I'm gluing my star onto the blue area and then I'm going to glue the craft stick kind of hanging off the star and then I'm going to glue the button on and then I decide I need some twine in the holes so I have about a minute for the fabric tack to work I put some twine through the holes get the button back into place and then I said I don't even like that button so in the final looks you're going to see a whole different button but in the end that makes this project free-handed and all, complete.
So I hope you like how all these simple, quick and easy, last minute, patriotic 4th of July projects came out. That was a long sentence. Well, I started the beginning really long, so I'm going to end it really long, right? <laughs> hope you like how they all turned out. Please give this video a thumbs up. You know the drill. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which one you think you would make last minute. I mean, at least the last project because... Y'all, it really took like 20 minutes. You can make that so quick and easy. I trust you. You can do it. You got this. You're talented. I'm on your side. <laughs> if you're wandering in here for the first time and you're just checking things out and you're digging what you saw, before you click off, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another project from me. But before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. In the middle of a challenging path, you might tend to think, if the Lord is with me, why is all this happening to me? Honestly, he never promised the road would be easy, but he did promise that he would always be with you. He promised he would never leave you nor forsake you, and he will always give you the strength to make it through. He will always part the waters to give you dry land to walk through to the other side. Keep in mind that the enemy will try and step in and put things in your path. He will throw fiery darts in every direction, trying to take you away from your faith. The enemy will try to get you to feel like God is not by your side, that he isn't listening, and he certainly doesn't have the time for you. But never trust what the enemy is trying to do, because God is is with you and he has given you the strength you need to face every obstacle thrown your way. You have to believe that. You have to hold on to the hope that God cares for you. Don't get stuck in the thoughts of the enemy. Release those thoughts and keep going in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. God will give you exactly what you need to continue the fight. He will stay with you always. And once you walk through the dry land to the other side, God will release those waters to flow again, crushing the very enemy who tried to stop you in the first place. You might see the obstacle, but God sees the way forward. You might see what is lacking, but God sees the solution. You might feel defeated, but God sees the promise of victory. God will fight for you. You only need to be still and know that he is God and he can and will do anything for his child. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.